For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Life eternal is set forth in Jesus Christ. We are, we are all appointed to death. Someone said that it, it is a sure of taxes. But more sure of taxes is death. The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the fact is that we are all sinners. And that the Bible says the wages of sin is death. We are going to die because we're sinners. We are born sinners in the nature of Adam. Adam sinned against God when God told him not to partake and eat that fruit. And he did. And man became sinners. And it's something we have to deal with. It's something we have to live with. And it's something we have to come to God. Because we cannot, we cannot deal with sin our own selves. We cannot go to religion and have God satisfied with sin. We cannot be good when the Bible says there is none that doeth good. No, not one. There is nothing that man can do for sin that has not already been done through Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ, He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by Jesus Christ. So when Jesus Christ said of Himself, He is the way, there is no other way, there is no other person but the man Christ Jesus. There is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Not the man, the Pope, not the woman Mary, not Muhammad, not Joseph Smith, Mary Baker Eddy, but the man Christ Jesus. Satisfaction in life and eternal life for our souls, the glory of God is Jesus Christ. That without Jesus Christ, there is no satisfaction of God. Without Jesus Christ and you die, you will wake up in a place called hell. Heaven is not by good intentions. Heaven is not by, oh, I think I'm going to go to heaven. You can't think and be when it comes to reality and the scriptures. The world will teach you, do what your heart desire, follow your dreams. And the Bible says, follow Jesus Christ. You see, it is the word of God what saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Those are the keys. God has never asked for your opinion. God has never asked what you think and what you thought. God don't care what you think. God doesn't care about your ideas. It has been set forth, written in the rock, and that rock is Jesus. Written in the blood of Jesus Christ, there is salvation. 
There is a way to get to God. There is the truth of God. And there is the life of God. And it's in Jesus Christ. Without saving belief in Jesus Christ, there is a hell for your future. And faith and belief in Jesus, that is your way to heaven. The Bible says in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. When Jesus said, He is the way, and the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there's no room for Baptist. There's no room for Catholic. There's no room for atheism. It is Jesus Christ or it is hell. For the Christians, the Bible says to Christians who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone, the Bible says for us to go into the world and preach the gospel. It does not say go into the world and be nice. Go into the world and do things. It does not say go to church, invite them to church. It does not say baptize. It says go into the world and preach the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is life. That is the way of salvation. That is what God approves of. God does not approve of us working, of us doing when Jesus Christ has already done. When the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, he said, it is finished. That's the word of God. The word of God of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross where he suffered and died and spilt his blood and that blood is, is God's blood. Acts 20:28 20, for man and his sins. Now, if you were to go to your Catholic church and partake of your mass, where you will literally eat the blood and uh, eat the, the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus, and that's what they will tell you, that's what their catechism tells you, it is the literal blood, it is the literal flesh of Jesus Christ. Well, let me tell you, in 66 books of the Bible to eat, and drink blood is an abomination. That when you partake of the mass at your Catholic church or Lutheran church, you actually are, according to the Bible, doing an abominable thing. And if what you are doing is an abominable before a holy and righteous God, it's not going to get you to heaven. You're not going to be good enough. And many people will come up to me, well, I'm good. Well, the Bible says there's none that doeth good. That if you are going to rely on good, you have to be the best over Jesus Christ. You must be holy as Jesus Christ is holy. You must be without sin when Jesus Christ was the sinless one. That you must do everything 200% according to God's will as Jesus Christ did. That the Bible says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ 
and thou shalt be saved. God's satisfaction is Jesus Christ. God's way of salvation is through the cross of Jesus Christ. The payment of sin is God's blood that ran through the veins and spilt out of the body of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. They beat Jesus Christ with their fists. They punched Jesus Christ with their hands. They pulled the beard of Jesus. They beat Jesus Christ with a cat of nine tails. They slammed on his head the thorns. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, was beaten and so marred, it describes it as a farmer plowing his field. And yet the Bible says not a bone of him was broken. That when Jesus Christ died on the cross, on that cross he was unrecognizable as a human being. Mankind, the creation of the creator that died on that cross. If I can be so blunt, mankind beat the crap out of Jesus. God allowed his creation, man, to beat the son of God for our sins. And believe me, those Roman soldiers and the guard of the high priest did an efficient job. And I guarantee, when it came to being nailed to that cross, I guarantee Jesus Christ voluntarily put that right hand down and they nailed it. And he put the left hand down and they nailed it. And he gave his feet and they nailed it. And let me tell you, to be crucified, to be nailed, to be beaten, to be scarred, to be bruised, to be punched, to be hit, to have your beard pulled, it took suffering. It took pain. Jesus Christ is God. He was the sinless one, and yet he still suffered pain. And he suffered pain. According to Isaiah 53, the suffering servant of God suffered that we might have life. The Bible even says that Jesus Christ himself, when he died, he went into hell and deposit sins. I guarantee that Jesus Christ, when he went into hell, he suffered the burning and the torments in hell. As those that go into hell are suffering and burning and in torments. And the Bible says that he crossed that gulf and went over to Abraham's bosom and set them free into a place called paradise. When the Bible says if you want the best of God, you want to go to heaven, the Bible says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Nowhere in the pages of the 66 books of the King James Bible does it say invite them to church. Nowhere in the pages of the Bible does it say get baptized for salvation. Baptism is an event that happens after they believe. When, when an Ethiopian eunuch 
came to that body of water, he says, Philip, what hinders me to be baptized? And Philip gave him that you must believe, you must trust in Jesus. And the flipping, and the uh, Ethiopian eunuch says, I believe Jesus Christ. No, that's not correct. I shortened and didn't quote it verbatim, but I can show you right here in my Bible. Before Philip put that Ethiopian eunuch in the water, he had him confess with his mouth, Jesus Christ. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The very first thing you will want to do when you truly get saved by God through Jesus is you're going to want to speak and tell people. I ain't preaching. I am testifying of my Savior, my God, who saved my soul. April 21st, 1987, I put my faith and trust in Jesus. The very same Jesus, the very same salvation that I am preaching and have preached since the day I got saved. I came out of the Catholic Church. I was a Roman Catholic before I got saved. After April 21st, when I believed on Jesus Christ, I became a Christian. A Christian is not somebody who says, I'm a Christian. A Christian is someone who has believed nothing else in Jesus Christ. The salvation of God. The way of God. The truth of God. And the life of God. Believe. On the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Mary can't do it. The church says that Mary is the animator, but the Bible says in Timothy, there is one mediator between God and man, the man. Christ Jesus, the man, the male, not female, not Mary. So to say and to publish and to put into tradition and to make an official bull that Mary has the power is a lie. Now, Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth of God. John 8, 44 says Satan is the liar. He is the father of lies. That the commission of Satan himself is to lie. And the commission of God is to tell the truth. You are dwelling in this world today between God and Satan and the truth and lies. And the biggest lie that God has is that God can never lie. God is unable to lie. And God cannot lie. And that the liar is Satan. Now Satan can tell you a little truth. Satan can have some truth. But usually it is twisted. It is covered up and it's in a field of his lies. God puts forth his son as the way and the truth. And Satan puts forth a religion. A religion is not the way of God, and it is not the truth. Religion is man-made. 
And Jesus Christ is God approved. Satan will lie to you with a religion. God will tell you the truth through Jesus Christ, through the scriptures. That God said in truth, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Satan will lie to you and say, well, do sacraments. Sacraments are not Jesus Christ. I'll tell you another lie out of the Bible of Satan is that Jesus and God say that they made man male and female. Well, Satan has a lie today that I don't know what sex I am. I don't know if I'm male or if I'm female. I'm whatever. And even official documents of medical doctors will have a list of things under sex. Friend, that is a lie of Satan. Because the truth of God and the normal man will see that there's a male or there's a female. There is nothing else. That the world today has believed the lie of Satan. Just in the sexes alone. And Satan has come up with tons of other lies to give you a false security that you may believe you're going to a heaven but in reality you won't because you have not believed on Jesus now Satan has also come up with a lie of heaven by giving it other names Yes, the Bible speaks about a place called paradise. But that was Abraham's bosom. There is a place called, among the Vikings, Valhalla. The Muslims will believe, if, if I'm a good Muslim, I'm going to get some virgins. The Catholics believe that there's a purgatory. The Mormons believe they're going to populate some planet out there. God has a place called heaven. Satan has his place called by many different names in religion. God has a Christ. Jesus Christ. Well, Satan has a Christ. The Antichrist. The next dominant world leader will be the Antichrist. After the church has been raptured and Christians are gone, there will be the devil's Christ, the Antichrist. For a period of seven years, God has a Christ, Jesus Christ. Satan has a Christ. Christ means anointed. Jesus Christ is anointed. He is set for, he's ordained by God the Father. The Antichrist is ordained. He is into the service by Satan. Jesus means Jehovah saves. When Mary was told to name her baby, Say, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people. Jehovah saves. 
They also said to name that baby Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. That is Jesus. Emmanuel, God is with us. And if you are a Jehovah Witness today, Jehovah Witnesses do not believe that Jesus is God. Then why did they call him Emmanuel? God is with us. You see, through the Jehovah Witnesses, Satan will take away the deity. And that means the lordship, the godship, the holiness of Jesus. The people that come knocking on your door with a nice suit will proclaim if you ask them. And ask them, is Jesus Christ God? And they will say no. They don't believe he is God. That is Satan out there with their lies to take Jesus and make him ungodly. I didn't say ungodly. Make him ungod. That means they profess that Jesus Christ is not God. When Acts 20.28 20, says the blood of God was, was purchased the church. If Jesus Christ was not God and did not have God's blood in his veins. Then Calvary has been done in vain. And I tell you, Calvary is not vain, and yet religion of Satan is vain. That Jesus Christ is God, Jesus Christ is 100% God, and he was 100% man, without sin. And he was set forth to be the propitiation of our sins. Which means, in a nutshell, Jesus Christ paid the price of sin by the blood of God. You see, when it comes to sin and payment, God won't take water. Now you may come to this farmer's market and you may find something and say, Ooh, I, I like what you have. I want to buy what you have. And they give you a price for the product they're selling and then you try to give them a peso. They're not going to take a peso. They're not going to take a yen. They may take a Canadian coin or Canaan money, but they're not going to take a peso, they're not going to take a yen, and God will not take anything but the blood of Jesus Christ for salvation. When you go into New York City, you want to go on the subway, you got to get a token. And you got to put a token in the machine. You can't put a rock in the machine. You can't put a credit card in that machine. You have got to have a subway token or you are not getting on that subway. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to get to heaven. <coughs> you must put your faith and trust in Jesus for salvation. God is not going to take water. God is not going to take religion. He's not going to take church membership. He's not going to take you being good. He is going to take the precious blood of his son, Jesus Christ, that was spilled on Calvary. Not in Rome, not in Mecca, not in Salt Lake City, but upon Calvary. Outside the gates of Jerusalem, a hill called Golgotha, which means the skull where God died on that cross for man's sins. That Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And I know Satan is here today at the farmer's market. Satan's down there at that booth playing his music. And Satan sets forth. I don't want you to hear about Jesus. 
I will have them crank up my music. While Jesus is being preached. And you will have a battle between God and the battle between Satan here at the farmer's market as Jesus is preached and the devil sings. What would be the error if I came in here with dancing girls? Would they try to stop it? They wouldn't try to stop that. If I came here with a table to sell hot dogs and hamburgers, they would want me to buy a table, but they wouldn't be able to, they wouldn't stop it. If I came here with uh, brochures and information about a, a politician, well, they may try to say, we don't deal with politics, but that's tough. The law says I can bring politicians here. They wouldn't try really to stop it. But when Jesus Christ is preached, they will bring a DJ. They will turn up the music. They will do whatever they can. They will call the police. That man is screaming. That man is hollering. That man is destructing the police. Call the police. 911. We have a serious threat here. There's a man preaching Jesus. Get rid of him. And yet Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the salvation that no one else can offer but God himself. Satan and man will give us all kinds of means, all kinds of ways. But they are not the way of God. There are people who are in hell today. There are people who will die today and they will die tomorrow in what they believe outside of Jesus Christ. And when they enter into the gates of hell, they'll find out I'm wrong. But when you find out you're wrong, that's too late. There's a particular expression found through the book of Ezekiel. And thou shalt know I am the Lord. And when you study that you shall know that I am the Lord, in many cases in the book of Ezekiel, the people had died. And when you die, there's one way to find out. That God is the Lord. You enter into a devil's hell. Which comes to show me through the scriptures. That when you enter into hell you will believe God. It will show to believe that every graveyard has a Bible believer. Today... The HMS Titanic is filled with Bible believers. I don't know how many people died on the Titanic, but they're all Bible believers today. Because there is one way to find out that God is the Lord. And as God told Ezekiel, I am the Lord, you shall know. You may die as an atheist, but in your death, in all eternity, you're a believer. But the problem is, after you believe in God when you die, it's too late. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ before you die. You must put faith and belief in Jesus today, because when you believe in Jesus after you die, it's too late. You know, when you are making cookies and you put the cookies in the oven and you step out of the house and you go to the mall, you go to the store, you go to Walmart, and when you come home, you find that your house is burnt down. Then you go in the house and you turn off the oven. That's too late. That's too late. Your house is destroyed. And when you believe in God after death, that's too late. You must believe in Jesus Christ now. Now is the day of salvation. Death is too late. 
men will men may die as an atheist, but you don't go off into eternity as an atheist. An atheist is somebody who doesn't believe in God. An atheist has no faith, but if I put my key in the car, I have faith that car is going to start. An agnostic. If someone says, I don't know. Well, if an agnostic dies an agnostic, he will know, but it's too late. A philosopher is somebody that believes in the writings and the words of man. And when a philosopher dies, he will believe in the eternal word of God. See, eventually the Bible says, every knee shall bow and profess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. If you do it before you die, you are in good standing with God. If you do it after you die, you have been judged by God and you will be found wanting and you'll hear from God himself, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you as you were cast into the lake of fire. You see, there is a hell, but hell is not it. The Bible says that death and hell was cast into the lake of fire, and the lake of fire is described as the second death. And that hell today is described as a place of torment. And that God sends for Christians that have believed on Jesus go into the world and preach the gospel as a warning to you on what God expects you to do to get to heaven through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. A Bible-centered preacher sent by God and not Satan is for your welfare. And listen, I understand you're going to mock. I understand you're going to you're going to criticize. I know you're going to hate. The Bible already said it. He said there will be mockers. There will be scorners. And there will be fools. <clears throat> and the world believes everybody's going to go to heaven. And yet the truth of the Bible is many will go the broad way that leads to destruction. <clears throat> the Bible says not everybody's going to heaven. And the Bible says to the Christian to go out there with the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Because that is the way, that is the truth, that is the life of God to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Now you may hate me, you may not want me, and I don't care. Because God wants me here, God has given me the call to preach the gospel, and God has been victorious. Not me, but God has been victorious in all the ways we can try to stop the gospel from being preached. But here I am, six years later, still preaching. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. That is the word of God. <clears throat> now notice... I have not come here in six years. I have not come here and said, hey, come to my church. I haven't said that. I 
am not inviting you to church. I am inviting you to Jesus Christ. I am inviting you to God upon the cross of Jesus. That there is life. There is eternal life. There is a way and that way is Jesus. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Hell. And I know your modern churches today. There is no hell. There is no judgment. There is no repentance in these modern churches. I tell you, they are not known by God. God does not know them. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Those are damnable words by God. Those are the worst words of God in the Holy Bible. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That's God telling you to go to hell. And when God tells you to go to hell, that's serious. Because when God tells you to go to hell, there is no more hope. You are hopeless without Jesus Christ, when the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. Well, preacher, you know I got Mary. Nothing said about Mary for salvation. Nothing said in hope of Mary. The Bible doesn't say anything about eternal life in Mary. Mary was a wonderful Jewish woman. But that's it. Mary was a sinner. According to Leviticus 12, on the eighth day at the temple, they brought Jesus to be circumcised. And after those days, Mary brought turtle doves. Why did she bring turtle doves or pigeons? Leviticus 12 says because she was a sinner. And when the Catholic Church says that Mary was not a sinner, you tell the Pope and give him my name. Because there is no hope in the Pope. Only Jesus saved. I can show you the errors of the Pope. I can show you the errors of the Catholic Church in this Bible I have over here. The Bible says, the Bible says, call no man your father. The Bible says that there was a Catholic religion found in the book of Judges. And that the Catholic religion was not based upon Jesus and the apostles. There's no security in the Catholic Church. Well, I think so, but purgatory, but I'm not sure. Purgatory has been closed. Well, maybe this, if you burn enough candles, if they say enough prayers for you, if you have enough masses, if the priest shows up and gives you last rites. I'll just move. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's so plain and simple. That the Bible says, these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. And this eternal life is in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Well, it's time for me to pick up and move to another spot. Thank you.